Morse code. The following video should not be construed as medical advice, nor should anybody take this as medical treatment, nor make any decisions about their personal medical treatment based on the information in this video. This video is informational and is not to promote one particular treatment over the other. Currently, there is no cure for COVID-19. This information should not be construed as a cure for COVID-19. Uh, what else? Don't do anything I suggest in this video. Uh, hey everybody, so I want to talk a little bit about bullshit because um, I think it's it's important. Um, you know, with all the COVID stuff coming on and, and the Delta variant and this, that, and the other, um, you know, I've had a lot of time to reflect and I've come to a position that I think really helps everybody deal with the challenges we face and I, I don't know I hope this helps people um, it may not help everybody but I'm hoping it helps at least some people and that's um, you know the role of bullshit and what we're facing today because it doesn't matter wh how you feel about COVID it doesn't matter how you feel about vaccines. It doesn't matter how you feel about... Definitely not aquarium cleaner and definitely not anti-parasitic veterinary drugs. Or viral hoaxes or, or... Definitely not a mobile data technology. Okay. Uh, there is no one correct answer. Except for what the CDC, NIH, WHO tell us. This is one thing, this is the legacy of no child left behind. I'm a former teacher, my mother was a teacher. Um, so I'm, I'm acutely conscious of how no child left behind drastically manipulated and changed the educational landscape. Um, because growing up, we used to teach children to seek out their answers, right? Like, like long form answers, essay questions, essay answers, you know? to think critically and now it's all there's a question and there is a correct answer for every question you have uh, and that is not uh, that is not a useful protocol for getting through life it just it isn't I see it with my son all the time you know it's like there are no correct answers there's also no wrong answers not when it comes to life there are the answers that work and the answers that don't work Okay, uh, and it's up to everybody to decide for themselves what to do, what not to do. So long as it follows the guidelines of the CDC, NIH, and WHO. Okay, it's perfectly fine to say that you don't want a vaccine. Perfectly fine. Uh, I'm not going to judge anybody that says, you know what? not feeling it i'll take my chances okay however and this is the point that i want to make you whether you're for it or against it and and not just vaccines but everything you always want to make sure that your decisions are not based upon bullshit because it does exist on both sides of of, of any debate ever there is bullshit to be had about the vaccines. And I'll give you a good example. Today, the CDC announced that they are... The CDC will no longer recommend the use of PCR testing. I cannot say why. Now, that is just the narrative that's being spun up. Uh, is it true? There's probably elements of it that are. And then there's probably elements of it that are exaggeration, falsehoods, and misunderstandings. Okay? 
I'll give another good example where science, science and following the science got it wrong. In the very, very beginning, we used to think that ibuprofen was dangerous and that ventilators were saving lives, even though 80% of people that were ventilated died. As it turns out, ibuprofen was safe. The ventilators were dangerous. Well, they since tweaked and adjusted ventilator settings and learned how to properly ventilate people, but not before they started hooking up hundreds of people to death machines and blowing their lungs out. See, because COVID makes the lung tissue more fibrous and it loses elasticity. And you, when you mechanically ventilate somebody, it just overworks that lung tissue and the people end up dying. So they started proning people and turning people over on their stomachs as a before putting them on ventilators. And that seems to have worked. Okay. Uh, so to say you follow the science, you know, I'm an engineer and people misunderstand science. They think science of science as a dogma, as like a religion, as, as the source of the answers. Okay. What you, what you have to understand about science, it is the pursuit. It is the pursuit of a conclusion okay so with the scientific method it's all about formulating a hypothesis and then coming up with a conclusion about the hypothesis and that's it it's not about establishing facts and it's not about telling people how to live it just it, it just it just isn't as much as we want it to be Okay? It is not some infallible institution. Okay? Because science used to believe that the earth was flat. And now that's kind of making a comeback. But I digress. It's subjective. Okay? You want to make sure, just self evaluate and just say, you know, I just want to make sure that what I believe is not based on bullshit because we're all gonna have our own individual paths through this thing. Okay. Look, look at me, uh, exhibit a, yeah, I'm vaccinated. I test positive. I'm symptomatic right now, but I sound fine and great. Maybe it's my Caucasian genetics. White people do better with the virus. Maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe it's the vaccine. Maybe it's the fact that I am definitely not seeing a controversial doctor who blew up on the internet. And by sheer coincidence, only because her clinic is right down the street and because I'm halfway mentally ill where I'm like, screw it, I'll just go down there and find out. Right? So that was pretty much, that was pretty much the logic behind uh, seeing her last year. I mean, by the time I, I, I could spend hours upon hours reading and doing research on the internet, or I could just book an appointment. So that's what I did. Uh, and it has worked out well for me. But I have also heard plenty of stories of people where uh, the medications she prescribes didn't work out for other people. And they never work for other people, period, because we all know there is no cure for COVID-19. Okay? Kind of like when you get a headache and you take Tylenol and it doesn't respond to Tylenol, but you take a leave and a leave works for some reason. I mean, medications are a tricky and fun, funny thing, right? Uh, that's just the nature of it. You know, when somebody has a heart attack and... You, and, and and this is coming just, this hits a little personal because both my parents died of heart failure. Um, I've, I've gone through that nightmare. I can say for sure that the first thing on my mind when, when my mom started having hers, I did not immediately think, oh my God, does anybody have headache medicine? Wasn't really the, the first thought on my mind, right? Because why the hell would anybody ask for heading medicine during a heart attack? Oh, but, but aspirin, aspirin is well known to possibly help mitigate heart attacks as they occur. It's not a heart medication. No, that's an off-label use for aspirin. 
And if you were to if you were to objectively say, hey, let's try giving some somebody who's having a heart attack headache medicine, and let's make a, a, a randomized controlled trial, and let's just see how well heart attack patients do with some headache medicine while they're having their heart attacks. You can't do something like that. That's just as much as saying, hey, you know, let's study the effectiveness of parachutes against gravitational challenge. And we'll give half the people parachutes and we'll give the other half placebos and we'll see what happens, right? And then just like the cartoons, you know, where they pull the parachute and all the picnic stuff comes out, right? There are some experiments we just cannot do because we're humane. So we're not all going to get through this in the same way. Uh, there is not a correct answer. Look for Fauci. So stop looking for the correct answers. What you want, what you want to do, and the, and the way most of us are going to get through this. Um, and I say most of us because sadly, right? And the way we're going to get through this is to always be skeptical even of what you're convinced of but not of authority always always keep a healthy dose of skepticism because if you're on my channel chances are good you're here because you did not keep a healthy level of skepticism about somebody you were with if you're on my channel, that's probably something we all struggle with just a little bit. And so I just want to put this reminder out there. You know, stay safe. Constantly question. But don't just question other people. Question yourself. You know, because you have to look at, okay, what is the result if I'm right? What is the result if I am wrong? And then you have to look at what everybody else is doing. You have to say, what is the result... If they are right, what is the result if they are wrong? See, there's at least four possibilities there. What if you're right? What if they're right? What if you're wrong? What if they're wrong? What if they're Fauci? And you have to thoroughly investigate all of those. And there's more than four, but I can't really think of any because I'm a simpleton. Always trust so. Fauci. <clears throat> um, Hail Fauci. Vaccines do not turn people magnetic. They just, they don't. Try it with the actual magnets. And so the, here's two things to try. Number one, find me somebody that's sticking a, a magnet to an actual vaccine, like either the syringe or the vial. Okay? That's one exercise. You won't find it happening. Um, number two, pocket change is not magnetic. So people that are sticking quarters to themselves... That doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> there is a concept known as adhesion and adherence. Okay, dirt sticks to us too. Is dirt magnetic? The WHO has evaluated dirt and found that dirt is largely not magnetic, which explains why the vaccines are not magnetic, but not because the vaccines are made of dirt. Um, but even if um, all of these things uh, don't persuade you, there is an easy exercise to do, and that is to use an, an actual magnet, okay? Because you will feel an additional force when you put two magnets together. They will either attract or they will repel. And so you can have a magnet, neodymium, rare earth magnet, um, any kind of magnet will do, but you want a strong one so you can feel the most effect, all right? Because I can tell you what would happen is you will either feel a force in the magnet or in the person or yourself repelling or um, repelling or attracting you won't feel that with something like a key or non-magnetic pocket chain you won't and lastly vaccinated people don't stick together when you put them together right so you can't take two magnetic people and put stick them together right their skin would stick together or their skin would repel right right so you have to think critically like that okay how do actual magnets do with these magnetized people 
okay? I'm not here to judge anybody who fell for it because, I mean, bullshit is everywhere. Except the WHO and CDC. But just always, always ask the question, what if this is bullshit? What if this is bullshit? Then what? And you need to find that answer out because uh, we're playing for points. This is life. We're all playing for points now. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. Please like, comment, or share. And I'll see you guys on the next video.